Welcome to the Marketing and Me podcast. If you're eager to grow your health and wellness business via effective marketing methods while maintaining your own health and wellness, this podcast is for you. I'm your host, Leanne Shelton, and I help business owners just like you build trustworthy connections with their ideal clients. And I do this through engaging conversational copywriting and strategic advice at Right Time Marketing. So feel free to book in a free 30-minute discovery call with me after listening to today's episode. The details are in the show notes. And today I'm joined by my guest, Kirsty Ferrugia. Welcome, Kirsty. Yeah, thank you so much, Leanne, for having me on your awesome podcast. It's such an honor. Thank you. Thank you. It's very exciting. Um, So Kirsty is a professional organizer and transformed messaholic. I wish I could say the same for me. Um, (laughs) Passionate about helping others to find space in their heads, hearts and homes. Kirsty wants to share with others the freedom that comes from living a decluttered life. Co-founder of The Art of Decluttering, a professional organizing business and popular podcast, Kirsty is on a mission to help those who are too busy, too confused, too tired, too stressed, or too overwhelmed to deal with their own clutter. And she works with clients to create order and make long-term improvements in all aspects of their lives. And Kirsty lives in Sydney with her uber-organized husband and two gorgeous children. Awesome. Um, and I've known Kirsty for many years now, thanks to the local networking circuit yeah. and uh, <laughs> going back a while. And she actually gave me some great advice in setting up this podcast, thanks to her own expertise with her podcast. So yes, thank you again. Uh, I felt a bit guilty. I'm like, oh, I'm picking your brain too much and pulling you. No, you didn't pick my brain enough, my friend. Not that there's anything wrong with your podcast, but I didn't feel at all hounded. You could have asked way more questions. I did. Yeah, I went on my own because I'm like, I asked a couple of basic things for feedback. But um, yeah, so would you like to tell us more about you and your business journey and how the podcast is going? Sure, sure. Well, I'm a mum and a wife and a friend, sister, eldest of five kids. I've been a professional organiser for the last eight years. But as you said in the bio, I haven't always been organised. I used to be a red hot mess and the biggest procrastinator that you'll ever meet. Um, So I know that if I can change, then anybody um, can. And that's why I love teaching the art of decluttering now, because I really, truly believe that everyone can live a life free of clutter. So my home growing up, um, we had five kids and two parents and our focus was on hospitality and welcoming people into our home. Um, We would be that family who shoved things into cupboards two minutes before (laughs) people (laughs) arrived. (laughs) It wasn't ever really messy though. It was just piles here and there. And, um, you know, my parents gave us the freedom to have our bedrooms however we wanted them to. Um, And mess and clutter just didn't really bother me. And then I met my husband (laughs) and he is the complete and utter opposite to me in nearly every single way, as tends to be the case with most marriages. Opposites attract. (laughs) Yes. So he came from a home that was really well organized and didn't have a lot of clutter um, and he couldn't handle the mess. So he would often clean my bedroom, um, which was funny. And then, of course, we got married and moved in together. And you can imagine um, the clash of cultures that that was. Um, So that was fun navigating that for the first couple of months and first little while. And then I just saw how much grace he had over doing things and he every he knew where everything was and he could find things at you know a drop of a hat so um I was like oh and he was getting frustrated with me I was getting frustrated with him so I was like well I can either stay how I am or I can merge and be a little bit more like him because I saw that things were easier for him he wasn't running around like a red hot mess so 
I did that. I started mimicking and copying the ways that he did things, giving homes to everything and, and life just was easier. And then about 10 years ago, we stumbled across minimalism um, and found the freedom that actually having less um, things to tidy, less things to organize and less things to care for um, and how much more freedom we had through um, actually decluttering and getting rid of stuff um, had brought to our lives. And then eight years ago, um, when my youngest was about 15 months old, I started to get itchy feet for getting back into work. Um, and I used to be BC, I was an accountant and a financial planner. And I knew I didn't really want to go back to that type of work, accounting for my every six minutes. No, thank you. Um, so one day I went into in and then sorry. My oh, I so one day I went into Howard Storage and I picked up their little magazine and inside it was an article about a professional organiser. And because of the drastic transformation that had occurred in me, I thought, well, maybe I could help others have their own move from a red hot mess to a more organised life. So off I went. I started working with a few friends and we're in the same um, area of Sydney. And so there was lots of um, local mums that um, were willing to take me into their homes and help them um, and so that's how I started my business um, and then four years ago when my daughter started school almost four years ago three and a half years ago I was like right full-time into this business now that I have that freedom and um, so then I went full-time and then um, three years ago my friend Amy who I grew up with um, in Melbourne um, she was also a professional organizer and she contacted me to see if we could do a collaboration um, grow our businesses grow our email list and we were tossing up a few ideas and we ended up landing on a podcast she was like what's a podcast and I was like don't worry I'll do all the tips you can just rock up and share your wisdom and you know maybe 20 of our clients will listen maybe it might be a good way of you know maybe getting more clients maybe <laughs> <laughs> um, we quickly grew our listener base um, we were the first Australian podcast of professional organizers um, there's heaps in America but we were the first Australian and now there's a few more of our colleagues have jumped on board the podcasting bandwagon so it's wonderful um, and so we continued to run our own separate businesses and just a joint venture for the podcast and online courses and then a year ago we decided to declutter our separate businesses and join forces completely. Um, and now we're the art of decluttering and we service um, clients in their homes in Melbourne and Sydney and actually anywhere in Australia that people are willing to pay for us to come to um, and particularly around Victoria. And um, we also serve our clients through our online courses um, and virtual decluttering sessions. And then anyone can tune into our weekly podcast too for all our tips and tricks that way as well. Awesome. Yeah, I love your podcast. Um, but I met quite often, I listen to something and go, really inspired here in the car and then like get home and like, oh, yeah. Because, <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, I think especially for those who work from home, the it's like for me, I walk to the kitchen and I go past the messy toy room. I go past this second dining room table, which has just become a dumping ground. And um, I, I try to, at one point there was like every Saturday I was cleaning one space and I cleaned up the pantry recently and I got that really good. And mm -hmm. I remember how good that sensation felt. And then it's like, okay, what's the next space? And I just feel overwhelmed and overwhelmed. I just need to start and I'm like, mm -hmm. all right, should I do underneath the sinks or should I do underneath the laundry sink? Should I do that? Yeah. It gets like that. Yeah. 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 And that's why we have a business being able to go into homes and help people because people just get stuck and just don't know where to go and don't know where to start because everything needs De you know ev everything need can have a good declutter and a good organize so yeah i mean because like at just a pantry alone everything before was just like one shelf had a mixture of food items that you know the healthy stuff that i was gonna make into things and just never mm. did <laughs> um, aspirational healthy food <laughs> yeah you know like the, the not the quinoa but like a, a you know the 
you know, tahini and things like I just never end up baking with. And, um, and it's just a mess. And then I cleaned it all up. And now I've got a particular section for the items that haven't yet been opened or that. Yeah. And I just, oh, it just has this great, um, yeah, sense of calm. And the same thing as well if I'm, can't, all right, you, your kids need the sunglasses. Ah, I know where the sunglasses are in that drawer. You go to the drawer, there's the sunglasses. It just feels you're in so much more control and it's a great yeah. energy. And yeah. Yeah. So it's just a matter of me working through all the spaces that need it. Um, I guess the the uh, toy room is my biggest thing because I want to stand by my principles and not clean it um, and make the kids do it. But it takes so much yelling to make it get done. And we give them like we have a cleaner once a month and we give them like, all right, by 6 p.m. the night before. And it's like 5.59 and they finally do it, including some shoving things in the toy kitchen and the toy tents. Mm -hmm. um, but oh, the anxiety just like, meh. Anyway. Yes. Today I, I heard you. To... <laughs> I heard you talking to Julie Cliff about that. And I was yes. All like, yes. Oh, yes, my goodness. Yes. Um, but, yes, today we're not going to talk about kids' rooms because I want to avoid that. <sighs> Goose rubber. Um, we want to talk about tidying workspaces. So mm -hmm. why is it important to have a tidy workspace? Probably partly of the reasons I just said. Yes. <laughs> so researchers at Princeton Uni um, Neuroscience Institute found that when your environment is visually cluttered, the chaos restricts your ability to focus. The clutter also limits your brain's ability to process information and clutter makes you distracted and unable to process information as well as you do in an uncluttered, organized and serene environment. So the research used functional MRIs and other physiological measurement tools to map the brain's response to organized and disorganized stimuli and to monitor task performance. And the conclusions were really strong. <laughs> so if you want to focus to the best of your ability and process information as effectively as possible, um, it is recommended that you clear the clutter from your environment. Um, that research shows that you'll be less irritable. <laughs> Probably why I'm so irritable all the time at the yeah. moment. <laughs> More productive, less distracted often, and able to process information better with an uncluttered and organised home and office. So there's other studies, you know, often people will pull out um, um, competing on opposite studies um, that show that a clutter-free environment um, can inhibit creativity. Um, so it really depends on the type of work that you do and, of course, how you best operate. However, I also think that there are so many more creative ways of inspiring innovation and inspiring creativity than justifying living in your clutter. <laughs> So I wouldn't use um, those other studies as a reason to continue to um, work in clutter. And on a whole, and in my um, experience with working with business um, clients, working in a clutter-free environment has provided them with more time. Instead of feeling like they're chasing their tail all the time, they're organised um, and they have systems that um, are in place and it gives them their, the ability to focus on what's really important to them them in business but also in life um, and decluttering and organizing their business has also had the flow and effects of increased sales who doesn't want that um, new opportunities um, and productivity that they only dreamed of before decluttering so and I think clearing space physically can really have an energetic effect on our businesses like I think that it just tells um, the world that we're open for new experiences and new new stuff coming in. So I, do, I think from an energetic perspective, it's really important to have a clear and organised space. Yeah, you don't want to see mine right now. Um, <laughs> I can see yours right now. <laughs> we're on Zoom. Yeah. You can't see it that well. It's actually well <laughs> hidden, all the rest of it. Um, I, I think it's just because I, I like to write notes and then I don't have enough time to type up those notes I want to type up. And yeah. um, I couldn't even hand it over to a VA because I probably can't ha read my writing. Um, <laughs> I, I type for a reason. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, so today, I, yeah, that's, that's really good. Um, it's interesting to hear about the research and how it, it does make sense. Like when I, 
do have a freshly clean desk. I feel like I walk with a better energy um, and I don't know, like when I've got most multiple post-it notes looking at me like at the moment and they're orange, they're in my face, um, it's kind of like little alert kind of yeah. um, signals going off that, yeah. oh, yeah, go do that. Oh, yeah, go do that. Oh, yeah. That, um, so you can't really focus. Um, I'm yeah. now to just ignore it, um, <laughs> which <laughs> also doesn't help. Um, but yeah, so today I want to talk about uh, two different types of spaces, the sure. space you do all your admin in and the place that clients see. Um, so obviously the health and wellness businesses most likely have some sort of area that their clients would see, um, but the admin is pro- the admin side's probably behind closed doors. So with the admin aspect, what are the must-have items for a productive work area? <laughs> Wonderful question, my friend. Wonderful question. Firstly, I wanted to acknowledge that everyone is unique and your business is unique to you. So I just encourage people to think about how they work, not how they think they should work, not how their mentor works or their colleagues work or, you know, anybody else, not how your husband works or your partner works or, you know, that aspirational working even I mean yes we want to we all love to improve ourselves and um, be the best that we can be but it's also working with who you are and um, improving on your weaknesses but acknowledging your strengths and acknowledging um, how it is that you do work best so um This is what I say to everybody, no matter what space they're working in, whether it's their home office or their, you know, client facing spaces or your kitchen or your bathroom or your wardrobe, um, what is your vision? Um, What is the vision that you have for this space? How do you want to feel? What do you want to get done in that space? Because that can really help you define what it is that you're trying to achieve. (laughs) So If it's the admin tasks in your business, how do you want to feel about those admin tasks? I'm guessing you probably want the admin to happen really quickly and really effortlessly, or you can outsource all your your blog posts and everything to Leanne. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) That's fine. Um, You might want money to flow in and you probably want to attract new clients. Um, So it's about thinking, what do you need for that space? And it's probably way less than you think right now or that you currently have right now. So when was the last time that you actually noticed everything that you have on your, in your space or on your desk? <laughs> um, we quickly become so blind to the things around us, even though they're pinging at us like Leanne's post-it notes. They're still pinging, but you've kind of gone half blind to them too. Like you're not reading um, every minute of the day you know, podcast with Kirsty, podcast with Kirsty, podcast with Kirsty, but they're there. And then sometimes we go blind to those notes as well. But we also go blind, like we go blind to lots of things around us. When we're used to it, we get blind to it. So I would really encourage you all to look at your space with fresh eyes, notice things, and then notice things that you don't actually need in that space. <laughs> Leanne's turning her face around <laughs> looking at all of her space. Uh, well, yeah. Um, yeah, there's, um, yeah, it's, there's like last year's diary when I had an actual handheld diary that's still sitting over there, which I forgot about. I kind mm-hmm. of, yeah, um, what else have I got? Oh, man, a lot of paperwork. I've got two snow globes, but they're presents from my daughter, so they're kind of a compulsory thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's interesting. And, yeah, a few other little things which just become part of the background. Yeah. They totally have. So a fun way of doing this or tackling this area is to actually take everything away and start with a clear space and just add things back in as and if and when you need them. So I'm presuming that most of us probably need our laptop or computer. Like that's a given in business these days for most of us. Um, But I want to get you to question things like that's my job as a professional organizer is to be a toddler and go, but why, but why, but why? And so I want you to be curious as well. I want to encourage curiosity in you and to get you to start thinking about, but why do I need a pattern, a pen and paper? Like if I 
you know, Leanne, you, you said before that ultimately you want to get those notes into a document so your VA can do stuff. So why not just do it? Like if you took the pen and paper away, you'd be forced to put it all into a document that your VA could look at. So, and I'm not saying that everybody needs to do that. I mean, pen and paper is really good for getting things into our brains, but just it's about questioning what it is. Like, do you need those snow globes on your desk or could you have them somewhere else where your daughters can see them more often and feel like, oh yeah, mum does really like think about us like could you have them on your bedside table or somewhere or could you say to the girls you know I next time you're you're going to buy me a present for mother's day or my birthday could you think about buying something that I do actually need at my desk you know it's just about being creative in that space and getting curious so um it's and it's about being very intentional and having that awareness like do you need the oil, you know, the essential oil on your desk or could you bring it out when you need it? Does the crystal need to sit on your desk or could it be brought out on just the days that you really need it? Just, just about encouraging you to be thoughtful and intentional about the things that you put on your desk and or in your space because clutter is like a magnet. It just attracts more and more clutter. So when you put... You know, when you put your old diary down that you no longer need, it gives you permission to put everything else down there. Mm. And so we want to take away that permission, like, because it's so easy. Like, you know. True. Cause I, I mean, yeah, because I cleaned my desk not that long ago. Um, I think it was during COVID. I'm like, oh, fresh clean. Um, and, yeah, and then I just, oh, there's something, yeah, I haven't typed this up, obviously that there. And the next time I'm like, oh, well, I'll just add it to the pile. It's true because yeah. I didn't have a pile of paperwork and suddenly I just have this massive pile of scattered has haphazardly and I'm yeah. like yeah I, I just got in and all the post-it notes I wasn't leaving myself post-it notes so I did one and suddenly it's bred to there's now six of them staring at me so <laughs> it's true they breed it is. they do <laughs> they breed and it gives you permission yeah. to oh I'll just add another post-it note instead of like no actually how else can I record this information or how else can I remind myself how like and it's not to say that visual reminders aren't really important some of us are really visual I know for instance I know myself I know that if I need to do a task I need to sit, have it sitting on my desk or in my visual space to remind me to do it otherwise you know if I don't if I don't remember that there's clothes on the line, it could be days before I bring them back in. So, um, but then there's a time and a place to have that visual reminder. So if you're wanting to focus and get, you know, your accounting done, you might hate doing your accounts. So clear the clutter, like take all the post-it notes off, take clear your desk, just even if it's just for that hour of productivity and then put back those visual cues that you need. Cause you don't need to be reminded about, those six post-it notes when you're working on your accounts, well, for instance. So, yeah. Yeah, Just. yeah I love that. Yeah, because it will, yeah, brings it to me to my next question. Um, someone who's naturally messy, and you get it because you were there, um, yeah. increase their productivity. What else can they do apart from, yeah, clear the space for that particular project? Yeah, so my uh, tip is to reframe your thinking Mm-hmm. and also your habits. So if you are naturally messy, um, one way of reframing that is to say, I'm working on getting less messy. Like instead of like giving yourself an excuse, instead of like just um, giving yourself permission even to continue to be in that mess, if you want to change, that is. Like if you've got no desire to change, cool, switch off this podcast, tune into next week's one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, we'll find something for you. It's okay. Um, yeah, no, I, I think it's true. Yeah, because look, I, I was always just a messy kid. Because I, yeah, I shared a bedroom with my sister. Yes. And so there just was limited space for stuff. And we'd still yeah. get stuff and didn't have anywhere to put it. And my desk, I couldn't actually do any work on it. I don't think I. I tried to for a little bit, but um, <laughs> with everything on it, I had this tiny little square and I like to spread out when I was studying. Um, mm-hmm. And so, and then I moved to a townhouse and then I moved to a bigger house, which is like more space to spread out. Yeah. Um, and I can't even like get angry at the kids for their messy habits. Cause I look at my own bedroom and there's clothes here and there. And I, uh, yeah. So 
I am, okay, I am working on being less messy. I'm going to add that to my mantras for the day. Um, <laughs> and just to work on each space, like I said, get back into that once a week even, just do a little bit. And, yeah. But it's also about just really easy habits of don't put it down, put it away. It's one of my favourite sayings mm-hmm. and it really helped me to change my habits from being a mess maker to being a reform mess maker. <laughs> so firstly, you obviously need to give things a home to be able to put things away. Um, but then returning the, it, trust me, your future self will thank you when you give something a home and then you return it to there. It's so much easier to retrieve it and it will actually save you time in the long run, long run. So your future self will certainly, certainly thank you when you can quickly and easily get your hands on something that you need instead of searching and turning your office upside down or turning the house upside down, looking for that piece of paper with that client's number on it that you've been meaning to return her call for five days already. So um, one of the, and around getting distracted, I encourage myself I don't always do it either because I'm still a work in progress to close down the tabs that I'm not working on um so you know shut down Facebook which I forgot to do before I came on (laughs) but shut down Facebook and um shut down anything that can um cause procrastination and can cause distraction so you know if you are working on something you know you're trying to write a blog post or you're trying you know you haven't outsourced it to Leanne yet so (laughs) you're trying to do something and you really don't want to do it and you really would rather do be doing something else like scrolling Facebook or Instagram then I really recommend shutting everything down apart from what you're working on and clearing that desk and so that you've got nothing else to focus on and just reminding yourself that your future self will thank you you'll feel so much lighter when you've got that blog post done or when you've done your accounts or when you've rung that client back you will feel free your future self will so thank you so i think for me it it has the change that i've seen in myself has really been about thinking about my future self and just doing things now while I'm still remembering it and just don't put it down, put it away. Then your second dining room won't end up messy. Then your desk won't end up messy. Then, you know, it has such a flow on effect if you just don't put it down and you put it away. Because if you put it down, that's fine. You'll put it away later. Later is the worst, but... You, but you don't, as you've already mentioned, Leanne, like everything else gets attracted to that one piece of paper that was put down. So just put it away. Because even if I like the paper, I just a folder and then I just put in the folder and that folder's tidily just put somewhere else and I know, all right, I have a bit of admin time, I'll type these up, get that folder out and it's at least all together, yeah. not just yeah. yeah thrown everywhere um yeah i love that and so for those who are working at home but don't have an office space or you know a room Mm -hmm. what are your recommendations for setting up a functional work area that keeps things separate from everyday life yeah another great question i think it also comes back to that thing that the point i made earlier was creating a vision and just having the essentials so what do you want to get done in that space is it a zoom meeting is it admin is it setting vision for your business and dreaming and creating goals Um, these require different things so it really depends on what you need that space for Um, i like the idea of having a bag or a box that you store all your work stuff in um, because it's helpful for making um, that space functional like uh, it means that it, you can be really flexible you can pick up that bag and go into the kids bedrooms while they're watching tv you can then take the bag or the box and sit up at the kitchen bench while the kids are watching bluey <laughs> um you can Yeah, so, and what I recommend having in that bag or the box is just the bare essentials. So your laptop, a pen and paper if you really need it, you know, maybe just your favourite oil blend, that that productive oil blend that gets your juices flowing and gets that creativity and the productivity going or that powerful crystal. So just having just the very, very bare essentials um, so that you can quickly set up 
um, wherever it is that you need to be. And I also think that it's um, helpful um, um, to not be, um, not get stuck in perfectionism. Often we think that um, we, if we just had a room to ourselves, we would be so much more productive. We would have a business like Leanne and Kirsty because I, it's not having the space that's stopping me from becoming successful. And I just want to encourage you all that that's actually a form of perfectionism, that you need something in order to move forward. Um, and that's not the case. You can be productive and you can have successful, amazing, amazing online businesses and, and, and in-person businesses by the tiny square of your kitchen bench that's left for you. So yeah, and I was just thinking as well, that bag, um, you know, go to cafes, um, yes. libraries when you can work back in libraries. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think that's why, because I know a lot of uh, copywriters, for example, who go to cafes and do a lot of their writing. And it just occurred to me, it's probably because they're not looking at their clutter at home. Um, yeah. the space is probably really clean. <laughs> yes, there's people around, but they're in a clean table. And yeah. Um, that's probably why it does work really well. Um, and just, yeah, having that bag and that flexibility to go outside the house, if that just yeah. um, gets you away out of your, your head and out of the chaos at home. Yeah, um, and not thinking that you need to lug everything around. Like, you know, you, you can be up at the bench, kitchen bench with your laptop, you know, to get your admin done or to do some social media posts. Like, what else do you need? Like, and it's coming back to that. Like, what do you need in, in your office space to do admin? What do you need? What are the bare essentials? So I love that. I love that. Um, okay. And so talking about client facing spaces, yeah. um, could you please talk us through how those should look and feel from the reception through to the room where the client is pampered, treated or supported in their exercise regime? Um, what should be featured and removed? It's probably, probably covered a lot of it, but if there's anything else you'd like to add based on the client experience. Yeah, so I'm guessing for most of your listeners, they want people to feel safe and comfortable and relaxed so that they can get the most of their session with you. That's what I'm guessing for most of most of us. That's what we want for, for our clients. So I just wanted to encourage you all to think about things from the client's perspective. How do they want to feel? How do they want to walk out? What feeling do they want to walk out from working with you? Um, what's in it for them? And remembering that um, it's about them. <laughs> and I know that it's about you as well and you want to be reflective of your personality um, and you want to potentially upsell them into some products or something else. Um, but when, when we're thinking about what a room should feel like and, and spaces should feel like, I really want to encourage you to actually think about it from a client's perspective. Um, so for the most part, I recommend that less is more. So again, you might, you do might, you do often want to upsell them for, with a product during your session, but they don't necessarily need to see every single item that they could potentially buy from you while they're lying on the table getting treated. Um, and equally, so like, yeah, so thinking about, well, how else could you upsell that to them? Like, could you mention it to them while, you know, say you're, um, uh, you sell oils, essential oils as part of your business. Like maybe when you're treating them and you're using an essential oil, you could say, oh, you know, you can buy this from me as well if you want to do use this again at home. Um, or maybe you can have a small selection at reception so that not everything has to be displayed in your room. And yes, you might want to teach them something while you're working with them. Um, so I was thinking about that. Maybe you could have your teaching tools on an iPad rather than having 15 posters around a room, making the room visual, really visually cluttered. Um, so that's another way of explaining something to someone is just having the pictures on your iPad. So again, it comes back to the fact that you and your business are unique and you need to be intentional about how you set up your own practice. Um, how do you want people to feel? Some, things to, some other things to take into consideration are how long are people waiting in the reception room 
um, what do they, what could, how could you make them feel comfortable and relaxed um, and inspired in that space? Um, and how long are they waiting in the room for you before you attend to them? Because that will also help you to just determine what needs to be in the room for them to make them feel relaxed and comfortable and safe. So those answers to those questions can really help you to determine how you might serve them best in those spaces and how, how you can make them feel safe and comfortable and relaxing. And it's not, don't hear me wrong, it's not about making everything white and stark and impersonal, not at all. Um, it's about curating those spaces with your ideal clients in mind whilst also bringing your unique personality to your business. So I hope, hopefully that's helpful. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And I'm just, yeah, just been reflecting on, because I go to a, a beauty therapist who works from home, a hairdresser who works from home, and just thinking mm -hmm. about what they've done. And yeah, it's pretty much like that. They've got, you know, some products out, not every single range, maybe just one of each thing, but not yeah. all stock on display. Um, one picture on the wall um, or a mirror, um, but it's all about, yeah, all the comfort. It's, it's all about that side of things. So, yeah, I, thank you for sharing that. It's really helpful. And do you have any other just general tips around decluttering when it comes to work environments? Yeah. <laughs> so my heart for people is freedom, um, freedom from unnecessary expectations and, and pressures. So I want to see people free to bring their best selves to their businesses. And I would love to see businesses thriving so that we can bring more goodness to our families and to our communities. So I just wanted to encourage everyone to be really intentional about what you bring into your home and into your business and what you allow into both of those places as well. Does it help you to achieve the freedom that you're dreaming about or is it burdensome? So, it, and that relates to our heads, our hearts and our homes and businesses. So it's not just the physical stuff, but also our heads and our heart. Does that thought or feeling, does it bring freedom or do I feel burdened by that thought and freedom, that thought um, or feelings? So, yeah, just wanted to encourage everybody that it's not just about your physical physical surroundings. Um, you can declutter your head and your heart as well and that's, equally and sometimes more important yeah 100 percent. and I, I guess all the health professionals listening who know how to do yeah. that too um yeah. yeah like just the de-stressing and the creating that you know as we've talked in previous podcasts about yeah meditation and things like that mm. um actually that brings me to the next question i always ask <laughs> my guests um how do you manage your health and wellness and i guess your mind and keep your mind clear and healthy and all that yeah Another great question. <laughs> um, <laughs> I could be a lot for some people. <laughs> yeah. So I try as often as I can to remember that I need to put on my own ma oxygen mask first. Like I do need to look after myself. Um, I do try to listen to my body and my spirit daily to see what I need of the day. Um, do I need more sleep? Do I need to say no to something that I've been asked to do? Um, and just asking myself what I need and giving myself space to hear the answer is really important for me. Um, for my health, I found like on a practical level, I found in intermittent fasting has worked really well for me. Um, and so I fast every day in various time frames. Um, and I also do my best to rest Um and rest for me is being with my family and switching off from work. So I think as business owners, it's really easy to be, you know, you and I were talking about this before you hit record, um, is to be 24-7 thinking about our business. Um, so I, for me, what's been um, a work in progress, particularly over the last couple of years now that I'm in partnership, um, is really having boundaries around my work. And that's challenging with kids. Um, and because they demand your attention at different times than you would wish that they had. Um, and so it's just, um, for me, the, one of the biggest things is just having grace, grace for myself and grace for my family and grace for my business and grace, like just to know that I'm just doing the best I can every day and that it's okay to say no to things and it's okay to not get everything on my to-do list done. Um, it, 
it'll still be there tomorrow but you know cuddles from my kids won't always be there and um cuddles with my husband may not always be there if i continue to put work ahead of our marriage so does yeah. that answer your question? It does. <laughs> good job. Good job. <laughs> um, yeah, like, yeah, I, I'm very conscious of all that too and making sure that I'm having that fa- quality family time going, all right, switch. I mean, I guess it is good that I do have my home office because I can close the door and basically that's, I just call out and say, mummy's home, even though they know I've been home if they were here. Um, and it's, all right, the door's closed. I'm not going back in. Or I, if I ever need to work at night, it's like, all right, that one hour after putting the kids to bed, which is hopefully eight o'clock, but you know, um, <laughs> I strive for the eight o'clock and then I'll say till nine o'clock and then I'll come out and spend the last hour and a half with hubby before I go to bed. Mm. I'm usually in bed by 10 30 because that's when I'm starting to fall asleep and yeah. I'm starting to wake up earlier um, just to get a little bit of work done in that morning too before the craziness. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And, and how can people connect with you? So you can follow me on social media at The Art of Decluttering. Um, They can tune in every Monday to our podcast, The Art of Decluttering as well. And if you'd like me to come into your home um, or work to help you declutter and get organised, you can contact me at kirsty at theartofdecluttering.com.au or over at our website, theartofdecluttering.com.au. Just in case you didn't know where I worked, it's The Art of Decluttering. (laughs) <laughs> at least you've got that consistency now versus a year ago yes. where it was like this is the podcast name and then this is the business name and yes exactly yeah. exactly it's consistent it's good um awesome well thank you so much for joining us i think yeah it's been very helpful and i'm gonna make it a priority to get through all this paperwork now and i'll <laughs> let you know and i'll take a photo and show you um i made myself accountable now i've said it my podcast yeah um <laughs> so yes thank you so much i really appreciate it it's been an honor to have you on Hello, <laughs> oh it's been so lovely thank you so much i feel very honored that you would ask me to be on your podcast G. Yeah. thank you you're welcome and thanks to you dear listener for tuning in as well you can find show notes for the episode at marketingandme.com.au if you enjoyed listening please subscribe and leave me a rating or review via your podcast app or at ratethispodcast.com slash marketing and me. And if you're interested in connecting with me, feel free to reach out via LinkedIn. Just search for Leanne Shelton. And you can also join the Marketing and Me podcast Facebook group. Finally, if you want to learn more about generating more leads or outsourcing your copywriting to me, thanks to Kirsty for that little plug a couple of times there, <laughs> um, head to my website, righttimemarketing.com.au and book in a free 30 minute discovery call. Until next time, I wish you good health and good wealth.